que así va, porque así va, porque así va, mundo es tu porque así va, porque así va, porque así va, porque así va. side of the Sea of Galilee into the place called Bethsaida, which was uh, 
uh, the home village of Philip, Peter, and Andrew. And these are presented with an opportunity of ministry. Remember, today we are looking at our big topic, responding to ministry opportunities. And someone has said, our attitudes and mindsets influence a great deal how we respond to issues of life. And in this passage, we find at least three people with an opportunity to respond to a ministry opportunity as provided for by Jesus. The Bible says that the crowds have crossed over to the other side. Jesus has crossed over to the other side. The crowds are coming. And verse number five, he says, as he asks uh, Philip, what shall we do to feed? Where do we get bread to feed these so many people who have come? Jesus provides a ministry opportunity. He wants to serve the crowds. He wants to feed them. He wants to minister uh, to them. And yet he is surrounded by a number of people who should participate with them in that ministry, who should respond to that ministry opportunity. Today we are looking at three of them. We are looking at Philip. We are looking at Andrew. We are looking at the young boy who had carried his lunch. And as we look at these three people, and as we consider our great topic today, responding to ministry opportunities, we will consider three great attitudes, three great ways that people can respond to ministry opportunities. The first two, I will dissuade you from pursuing them, and I will be persuading you to take up after the third one. Now, the first response, the first attitude, is what I call a Philip attitude, which says, it is impossible. So many of us would respond to ministry opportunities with the attitude that it is not possible. It is impossible. Nothing can happen. Now look at what Jesus is asking uh, Philip in verse number 5. That when Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people? He asked Philip, probably because of two great reasons. Reason number one is stated in verse number six, because Jesus wanted to test him. But probably a second reason, Jesus is asking Philip, where shall we get bread? Because that was the home uh, village of uh, Philip. And probably because he understood that Philip knew the whereabouts of that place. Where do we get bread to feed these people? Now, notice that Jesus is asking a geographical question. Where shall we get bread? And then Philip is responding with a Bachelor of Commerce accounting option and saying, even if we worked over here and got wages, well, that would not even be sufficient enough to feed these people. Now look at Philip's attitude. It says it is not possible. It is impossible. Where can we get, where can we get such sufficient amount of money to buy bread for these multitudes? Philip's attitude says it is impossible, it is not possible at all as we respond to ministry opportunities. Friends, even today and this morning as we share, because I know there are those of us that are present here, there are those of us that are listening to us online, there are those that would respond to ministry opportunities because ministry opportunities will ever be there. God will always provide that there are ministry opportunities each and every day, each and every time. This today, we are talking very specifically about a ministry opportunity as we respond to the need of our pastor. Because we want to get our pastor moving faster, even to reach out to us in terms of ministry. And even as we think about purchase of this car, and we have already discussed with your pastor, Reverend uh, Iluve, and we are saying, enough of the days that uh, pastor would use the car that he used to, he, he, he likes to describe, Gari ya kuingia. And now he wants a Gari ya panda, hallelujah. And that is where we are getting to. And we are saying, this is a ministry opportunity that God has provided to us. And Philip mentality may look at this opportunity and say, it is impossible. Where can we get this from? And everybody would go, now in the name of COVID-19, hard and difficult times, our economy is and the businesses and jobs uh, have run down. And where do we get money from? This Philip mentality is a mentality, is a mindset that doesn't like trying. This is a mentality that is defeated before it starts. This is a mentality that is uh, 
a flat tire. You see, you've, you've had a flat tire even before you start your journey. It is, it is defeated before it makes an attempt. It is equivalent to what uh, Dr. Carol Dweck would say in her little book, Mindset. She talks about two mindsets. Talks about a fixed mindset. Talks about a growth mindset. But in the fixed mindset, uh, Carol Dweck says that fixed mindsets do not even attempt anything. If there is anything that stretches uh, their abilities, then uh, that will be the end of it. They don't try anything. They consider everything impossible as opposed to growth mentality that says we will try it. And even if we fail, we will take that as a learning experience. Philip mentality is more or less like a fixed mentality that says we cannot try. Defeated before it starts. Eh? Defeated before it makes an attempt. Philip tells Jesus, where can we get? You see, even if we worked, uh, we cannot get enough sufficient amount of money to buy bread for these people. It is impossible. It is not possible at all. Defeated before we start. I have come to persuade you, people of God, that we will run away from Philip mentality of seeing that it is impossible. And that we will begin to see possibility that it is possible that our pastor can upgrade his car, that our pastor can be mobile again in a more convenient and a good way, even as he reaches out to us, both in the city and outside the city. And above all, that it will also serve his uh, convenience, even as he continues to move around. A man by the name uh, Victor Vroom, uh, he advanced a theory we call expectancy theory. And in that expectancy theory, Victor Vroom says that people and workers who do their best, they will be motivated to work when they know that there are rewards coming their way. Our pastor, in view of Victor Vroom's expectancy theory, can be motivated when he knows that the church is committed to giving him rewards. And a reward like this can be a source of motivation to the man of God. Praise the Lord. The first attitude, we are calling it Philip attitude, Philip mentality, which says it is impossible. But then we also have a second mentality, which I call the untrue mentality, the untrue attitude, the untrue mindset. This one says, not me, but others. Hello? Then, even though Andrew is a little bit better, his response is a little bit better than that one of Philip, this is what the Bible says about uh, Andrew. And Andrew says in verse number 9, Here is a boy with five loaves and two pieces of fish. But how far will they go among so many? So see, Andrew puts himself completely outside the picture. He says, not me, but others. Jesus is asking a very specific question. Where can we get bread and so that we can feed this multitude? Now, Andrew says, mm -mm, not me. Count me out of it. Excuse me. Not me, but others. She points out to the young man who has just come around, is having fun, waiting for the lunch hour to come, and so that he can have his lunch. And Andrew, I don't know even how Andrew noted that the guy had uh, five loaves of bread and two pieces of fish. Did he get into his uh, lunch box? Or uh, I don't know how he really discovered that the guy had five in number and two fish. But this is what he says. Not me, but there's someone else who has a solution. Count me outside. See, Philip doesn't spell out what he will do. Philip doesn't tell us his contribution. Philip doesn't tell us how much he will give in terms of responding to the need that is prevailing. I mean, Andrew. Andrew doesn't say that this will be my specific contribution. This is the contribution that I will make. But he is quick to look at others. He is quick to point out at others what I am calling an attitude of not me, but others. Don't we have people like this in the church? People in the church who think that this ministry opportunity is not their business. That this is not for them. This is for others. This is for the choir. This is for the pastors. This is for the committee. This is for the cats of honor. This is for the politicians. This is for others. This is not for me. That Andrew, Andrew, a mentality that says, not me, 
but others. Is what we have come to dissuade you, people of God, from. That we should stand to be counted. We should stand out to be counted as people that will participate. Before you begin to prescribe a solution to come from others, you need to begin to count yourself first and foremost and say, I will step in, I will stand up to be counted as part of the solution. And today, as we look into the ministry opportunity that is before us, because this is indeed a ministry opportunity when we serve the men of God, shall we find friends and members of ASC Umoja and friends outside there saying, first and foremost, before I point out to the young man, before I point out to the young man who has a, a fish and bread, I will, first of all, count myself and say, he ni yangu, and then others can also come in. And true mentality should be defeated in the name of Jesus. As men and women of God rise up to say, I want to be the first one to be counted before I can point out at others. Remember we are saying, Philip mentality, saying it is impossible. This cannot happen. We live in hard and difficult times. The uh, economic times are hard and difficult. Uh, see our businesses and income going down. That is Philip mentality, defeated before it starts. We are overcoming that in Jesus' name. And to mentality saying, not me, but others. We are saying, no, I was standing to be counted first of all. My contribution must be counted before I begin to count on others. Well, let me again uh, propose to us the third attitude, which I find a very interesting attitude and which I submit to us as the best of the three. And this is the young man's attitude, saying, I release all that I have for God's work. I release all that I have for God's work. What an attitude with a young man. You see, after Andrew points out to the young man and says, this guy has five loaves and two pieces of fish. You know, this thing has confused me a lot of times, wondering, is it five fish and two loaves? Until later on, I discovered from my mother tongue thinking, thinking from my mother tongue, that all the time, ugali and boga, nigani na kuanga kuba sana sana, ugali. So nikasema sasa samaki ndiyo wengi, kushinda, I mean, maikate ndiyo mingi kushinda nini, samaki. So it is five loaves and two pieces of fish. Am I helping someone? Yes, don't miss out on that any more time. So the young man has been pointed out. Andrew said, this guy has five pieces of loaf and two pieces of fish. But what will that do? We don't hear, we don't see the young man struggling to release, to let go his lunch. We don't hear him struggling and negotiating with Jesus we don't even hear him presenting it for sale. We don't even hear him saying anything. We don't see him arguing. We don't see him in that business of arguing with the Andrew, with Jesus. We only hear Jesus saying, sit these multitudes of people down and begin to distribute these pieces of bread and fish. The young man has already an attitude that says, all that I have belongs to God. I release it to the service of God. I release all that I have and so that they can serve the Lord. Friends, I have come to persuade us that again we may be reminded that all that we have, first of all, belongs to God. God only gives it to us as stewards that we may manage it. And when ministry opportunities come, we should be the first ones to stand up and say, Here I am, Lord, ready to release all that I have for the service of God. This is what the young man does. He says that I release all that I have and so that it can be a blessing to others. Friends, this attitude of releasing your, your resources, of letting your resources go out there so that they can serve others. Friends, I have come to remind you again that you can never go wrong in doing that. This is what the Lord requires of us, that we will release our resources to the ministry opportunities as they avail themselves and particularly today, shall we release our resources to the man of God, even as we prepare him, even as we prepare to be a blessing to him. And the Bible says that whatever we give finds its way back to us. Have you not read Luke chapter 6 and verse number 38, 
which the Bible says, give and it shall be given back to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. Now look at what the young man does. He gives everything. And does it come back to him? This young man, I think he just carried his loaves and fish for purposes of lunch. He never came to sell his lunch. He never came, he never carried his fish and bread for any other purpose. He carried his fish and bread for purposes of lunch. Now, after giving it out, did it come back to him? And I want to believe that he was part and parcel of the people that took, that took of the lunch that Jesus Christ blessed. So he never lost anything. In any case, he gave his loaves and bread, and they came back in terms of he himself having taken his lunch. And therefore, his agenda for carrying bread and fish was fulfilled because he had lunch. But I also want to ask myself, because later on we read that about 12 baskets full of bread and fish were also collected after everybody had eaten to their fill. Now I wonder where they took these 12 baskets to. And I have a feeling that the young man must have also benefited by carrying some of it, not, if not all of it, is not recorded in the Bible. This is my guess, that the young man must have benefited through to the word of God, that give and it shall come back to you, a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Friends, I've ever reminded myself in my uh, time as a Christian that giving makes you more beautiful. Giving makes you more handsome as a Christian. When you're generous, when you're kind, when you train yourself to share your resources, and particularly so with the men of God, this makes you a better person. This makes you more handsome and beautiful. See, when you serve the men of God, you can never be the same anymore. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 41, whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet, he will receive a prophet's reward. And the following verse, verse 42 says, and if anyone gives a cup of water to one of these little ones like Reverend Iluve, truly I tell you that that person will certainly not lose their reward. I draw your attention to the widow and Elijah. The widow serving the man of God, Elijah. And Elijah arrives there in uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 7 to 21. And the widow is busy collecting some pieces of sticks uh, and so that she can make the last party for her and her son and so that they can die. The man of God arrives and says, that last portion that you're preparing so that you can eat with your son and die, make that one for me, Elijah. And the woman says, we were only taking these and die. The man of God says, serve me first. I've come to remind you when we serve men of God, it is not in vain. There is a blessing. There is the prophet's reward. Because the Bible says again in 2 Kings chapter 17 in the story of the widow and Elijah, that verse 16, that the jar of flour never ran out and the jug of oil never was used. You can't go wrong when you choose to minister to the man of God. Today we are thinking of buying a car for our pastor. And uh, I want to tell you that this is something that can be done by one person. Just in another church, in this city, AIC Church. AIC Church. A pastor is surprised one early morning, Sunday morning. And uh, a car is parked on the outside. Mshiriki, moja. Not two. Not a family. Him alone. He comes and gives him keys. Not keys to a small car. I'm not talking about this bold type. I'm not talking about this field type. I've no problem with that. I'm only describing what was brought. Gari Yakupanda. Now, am I talking about Range Rover? Am I talking about Prado? Am I talking about all that? That is the class I'm talking about. One person buying the car for the pastor. Now, how many are we? So many of us. And today I know one of us, because we have the ability, we can step out and say, I want to be comfortable. I want to give my lunchbox. 
I want to give my resources and be a blessing to the man of God. And you alone, I know you can do that. But probably because of COVID-19, we will say, let's join together our resources and say, let each and every one of us release our lunch boxes like the young man did and say, all that we have is God-given and we release it to the service of God and let's be a blessing to the man of God. I think it's only in AIC church where ministers uh, struggle. A lot of times uh, we have said this and because we have observed the other churches, they start just the other day. And before long, the pastor, the kind of machine he drives, it intimidates you if you ever meet in a fellowship of pastors within the community here. Yeah, sometimes you, they, they wonder uh, which church you serve in. They, sometimes they wonder what kind of people you, you serve. And we serve the same people. They go to the same market, they go to the same uh, offices, supermarket. You, these guys, we interact the same way. But when it comes to giving, I think they impress the third attitude and say, all that we have belongs to God. We release it all to the service of God. And I think that is a difference. AIC, kindly may the Lord help us that we will say no. No to Philip mentality. The 4K club. I was a cani. No, I was a cani. That we will say no to Andrew mentality. That not me, but somebody else. And that we will embrace the young man's attitude. That all that I have belongs to God. And I will release it to serve him. And particularly to respond to this ministry opportunity as we serve the pastor today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much that we can be reminded on how to respond to ministry opportunities. Father, we pray this morning that you will help us by your spirit as we are saying no to Philip attitude of saying it is not possible. That this morning we will confess that it is possible. We can support the man of God. The man of God can drive the car, which is the desire of his heart. That even as he moves around serving you and serving your people, that he will be motivated. That is our desire, God. Help us to overcome unto mentality. That we will say, it is not others, but me, myself, I want to be counted as the first one. Help us, Lord, to impress the young man's attitude where we say, all that we have belongs to you. We release it all to the service of the Lord. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.